Hello scholars, welcome back. My name is Mr. Hinkle. In this lecture, we're looking at divisions of the marine environment. This is to supplement, to go a little bit deeper than understanding the marine environment in terms of marine provinces. We can further divide them into divisions. So our objective for this lecture is to identify and describe the divisions of the marine environment in the context of location and depth. So it's going to go a little bit like this. Here's some land, continental shelf, deep ocean basin, there's a trench, and a mid-ocean ridge. So not to scale, obviously, continental margin, deep ocean basin, mid-ocean ridge. Those are the three marine provinces. We can look at the entire ocean and we can say there's the ocean bottom and there's the open ocean. So the open ocean we term pelagic. And the ocean bottom we will give the term benthic. Benthic hosts organisms that live on the bottom, known as benthos, and the pelagic environment hosts organisms that swim or float, plankton and nectin. More on that in another lecture where we discuss animals of the pelagic environment and animals of the benthic environment. But for now, we are saying the marine environment is divided to, into the ocean bottom and the open ocean. Now we add on layers of complexity. The open ocean has biozones, the neuritic and the oceanic. But it's all the oceanic. But no, the oceanic biozone is part of the pelagic environment of the marine environment. I know, bear with me, but Pelagic has neuritic, which means basically near shore, right from the low tide line to the shelf break. Here's the shelf break. Here's the low tide line. We're going to call this neuritic. And then everything else in the open ocean, oceanic. Neuritic biozone. Okay, the pelagic environment is the open ocean that is divided into the neuritic biozone and the oceanic biozone. Shall we continue our deep dive into the ocean? If we think about the oceanic biozone now, we can distinguish this by depth. Instead of writing all of these on here, I'm going to describe them. So the epipelagic is from 0 to 200 meters, also known as the euphotic zone, where light penetrates for photosynthesis to occur. 0 to 200 meters. The ocean's average depth is over 4,000 meters. So this is a very thin sliver of the very top of the oceans. Below the epipelagic, we've got the mesopelagic, which goes from 200 to 1,000 meters. This is called the dysphotic zone. Very small light occurs here, and it decreases as you go down. And then below 1,000 meters, we get the bathypelagic zone, which is also known as aphotic. No light here. So after about a kilometer underneath the surface of the water column, there's no more light. It's all absorbed by the water that it's moving through. We go deeper. From 4,000 to 6,000, we have the abyssal pelagic, extreme depths and pressures here. And then in deep ocean trenches down here, the deepest areas in the world, we have the hadal pelagic, where extreme adaptations to this environment must occur. They do occur for marine life to exist. So the oceanic biozone by depth is here. We can look at the benthic environment now. So neuritic biozone, oceanic biozone, 
part of the pelagic environment. If we subdivide the benthic environment, and again, I'm not going to write all these on the board. We have a figure here, but I'll describe it. The ocean bottom, the benthic. Above the high tide line is the supralittoral. Between high and low tide is the littoral zone. Below the low tide line to the shelf break is the sublittoral. This overlaps with the neuritic in the ocean, uh, in the pelagic environments. Below the sublittoral, we have the bathial. That goes from the shelf break down to about 4,000 meters. Below the bathial, we have the abyssal from about 4,000 to 6,000. And then the hadal, which is the bottom of the trenches, below 6,000 meters. And these biozones are named such that organisms require adaptations to live underneath such extreme pressures in the absence of light in these different environments. So pelagic, I think I'm going to go to our conclusion. So understanding these divisions, they further help us to create a framework for understanding marine life, marine ecosystems, uh, marine adaptations, marine processes, all things that we will continue to explore in our, uh, as we make our way through oceanography in this introductory oceanography course. It's essential to understand marine processes and ecosystems to have a framework to divide and communicate upon. So this is in addition to our marine provinces where we have continental margin, deep ocean basin, mid-ocean ridge. We have our marine environments, pelagic and benthic. And within the pelagic environment, we can distinguish between the neuritic biozone and the oceanic biozone. Thank you so much for your attention, and I will see you in the next one.